الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأصلي وأسلم على خاتم الأنبياء ومرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد So my beloved brothers and sisters I begin with the greeting words of the righteous Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Alhamdulillah, we have the great pleasure and honor again to be with you in this journey to the hereafter. And this is a journey that is haq. It is solid and it is the truth. And it has well, bam. We're here on the Underground Railroad and we have a subject matter that I'm sure the public is interested in. And we want to talk about this so the public can have knowledge of it. And we're going to talk about it from the perspective of having charter schools, to having bad water <laughs> that creates the need <laughs> for more education. <laughs> and we're going to let our guests, starting on my left and moving to my right, introduce themselves. Good evening. My name <coughs> is Audrey Wright. I'm from Gordis Foundation and C.H. Millery. Address is 6430 South Ashland, 773 uh, 434 3920. I'm attorney Brunel Donald Che, K Y E I. I uh, am uh, currently, I just actually ran for lieutenant governor for the state of Illinois on the Democratic ticket. I am, uh, I was T.O. Hardiman's running mate. How many votes you get? We got 128,000 votes, 30% of the vote, and I want to thank everybody that went out and voted for us. I appreciate you, and I applaud you. Thank you. How much money you have? 30,000. Our commissioner from the Water Reclamation District. Uh, my name is Commissioner Frank Avila. I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And our mission at the district is to protect our water supply, which is Lake Michigan. Water is life. We need water. Our body is 67% of water. So we protect our water supply. Uh, and also our second mission is that we treat human waste. We treat poop and pee. We treat all the personal care products that you give us. We, uh, 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 pharmaceutical drugs and cosmetics. Comes to our plant and we treat it at the back end. Well, I'm really happy to have all of you here. Thank you, sir. And our, our, our basic topic, I'd like to get to all of you all's opinion. And I want to get the commissioner's opinion from a different perspective. But it still has the same perspective. <laughs> uh, Audrey, I know she has a program that's a very good program for ex-offenders. And all these years, she's been unable to really get funding. Mm. All right? Not even from the government where she's trying to keep people out of the prison system so we won't need charter schools wow. for them. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit about why charter schools are bad? Well, my experience with the charter schools and the public schools is the concern of the parents. They both need the parents. Why do a charter school and close up all the public schools when you still need the parents? We don't ever stop to think about the parents is behind everything. My son went to pu uh, public school. He graduated in eighth grade, a student public school. When he got past the eighth grade, I put him in St. Rita. And I put him in St. Rita for a reason. I didn't want them to elevate him to higher grades because he was so small. And the older kids would jump on him. But I was always there as a parent in that public school. My face was always shown in the public school. I, I never left him alone and say, okay, this is where you gonna be and, and go on off. And I had a job every day. So when you start 
putting closing up the public schools. It's got to do with the parents. The charter schools can't make it unless the parents are there. So it's the same thing. It go that's just like in the streets with guns. We need our mothers out there. We need our fathers out there. It always goes back to the parents. We can make things better to me. This is my opinion. It's okay to agree to disagree, but this is the way I think. We can make things better if we be better parents. You know, your child can learn just as well as anybody else. They're pulling all the good students out of the public school, the A students, and put them into these charter schools. And if they fail, they're going to fail in the, in the public school. It's, it's the mother behind every child. And I strongly believe in that. The mother has also the father. Has to step up. What, say, what do you think, Counselor? You know, I'm the product of public school. I went to James Weldon Johnson Elementary School. Um, I also, before that, before my mother was murdered, I went to McCutcheon Branch. And McCutcheon on the north side transferred into James Weldon Johnson Elementary School. Where's that? Um, it's on the west side of Chicago. I uh, went to Collins High School for a little bit, Evanston Township for a little bit, but I graduated from West Aurora, all public schools. Went to Northern Illinois University, a state school. Um, my children started out at a charter school at Elaine Lock on the west side, and then I transferred them over um, in, on, in, to Hyde Park School, a public school in Hyde Park. But I think that what it is is that the money situation. It's all about money. Politics is in everything we do. Yes, I had no idea. I was oblivious as an attorney in the courtrooms, <laughs> just <coughs> going to work, helping people. I didn't <coughs> learn about all the politics of all of this until I ran for office. Um, I understand that if you put a lot of money, the same amount of money you want to put into a charter school, into a public school, it's going to thrive. I remember being in school, always being one of the smarter kids, and it would, would force the other kids to step up and want to, you know, come up and say, no, I know the answer. I know better. So I think that was the wonderful thing to me about going to public school. You were able to, to inspire your other classmates if you happen to be the person that's in the head of the class. But I think it, if we just put the same amount of money into the public schools as we do the charter schools, then all the children can thrive. They can coexist. They can, uh, but the I problem is too. they've made one better than the other, and there are no statistics that support that. I we don't have any statistics <laughs> that support that. Well, I'm going to get to uh, our commissioner in a minute. You see, I have a problem with uh, charter schools, mm -hmm. and I have a problem with the position that the mayor has taken after we Tax people rate. of color gave him 59% of our vote. And the majority of the schools that were closed For was our in family. our community. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think that he needs a message sent to him. Well, that, what's that you can't make a fool out of us. Well, you know, that happens when we don't research the people that we're putting in office. When we allow people to give you a pamphlet to tell you who to vote for, instead of you going online, going to the library, going somewhere to find out about the people who are running for office. Um, we got a lot of elite people in office who think that they're better than the rest of us. That happens in everything yeah, we do. I said politics that is everywhere. That happens if you don't research That's right. that person himself, you get left holding the bag, yeah. believe me. I saw a lot of parents on television crying and hurting. I heard students mm -hmm. on television saying, please don't close our schools. And what's happened is we've elected robots. We've elected machines. They look like us, but on the inside they don't have a heart. They don't, they don't beat and they don't breathe for the people. They don't care about the people that elected them, elected them into office. All they care about is your vote. Other than that, you can forget it. it it's That's something what I else learned. they care about too. They care about the money. Money, yeah. They, and their friends. Yeah, they who they are care these about contracts. putting the money in their pockets and not into the community. Well, let me give you all an example before I go to the commissioner. When you're talking about uh, charter schools, you're talking about people who are going to give services and things of that yes. sort. 
And that's about friendship. Yes. I just tell it the way it is. I just said. All right. For example, Counselor, you're my friend. Yes. And I'm going to make sure that you get where you need to go. a million dollar contract. Yes. yes. All right. That's yes. right. Well, ain't nobody going to know that I wanted you to have that contract. So I'm going to close up 10 of these schools mm -hmm. so you could get this money. Mm -hmm. Also, you got to remember, there's no bid. I said, so I no just one's bid on did, these contracts? I said that. <laughs> the yeah. public does not know yeah. that. Yeah, no right? bid. What you just said and what I'm saying. Yeah. They don't know. Nobody sits down and bids on that stuff. And how can you be representing me? All right, let's, let's hear before I go to the commissioner, caller that's online. Caller, go ahead and speak. Caller, go ahead and speak. You on, you're on the line. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I wanted to talk to you about the charter schools. Yes, sir. And uh, it's, to me, it might be, I, I agree on what you all have stated about the charter schools, but it will be harder to abolish a charter school because, like the lady said, in politics about uh, it being political, it's not in just Chicago, but they are making uh, ch uh, charter schools a federal initiative. So it's not just in the state. They are already in the making of making a, a charter system all over this country. Mm -hmm. So how would how would people or advocates try to stand or, or try to uh, advocate for public schools if it's already in the making of charter schools being a federal initiative? And that's just my question. Well, well, I I believe that all of the power belongs to the people. Hmm. And if the people resist and say, okay, you go on and do that. But the next election, we got a surprise That's for right. you. You won't be sitting in that seat. All you have to do is get rid of one or two of them. And the rest are going to say, oh, my God, we got to start falling in line with what this group wants us to do. Because if we don't, this is what could happen to us. Because they want to be paid. What's happened is uh, instead of us having a democracy, like I was saying before, we've got an oligarchy where the people with all the money are controlling. That is not what democracy requires. Democracy requires the, ma the majority of the people to rule. The fact that the majority of the people in this state are not in favor of charter schools is supposed to be front and center and priority. But what's happened is we, the poor and the working class people of this state, have allowed wealthy people to um, take over our state and run the state. So <coughs> until we collectively get together as a majority and come with one mighty voice to come against what we don't want, the wealthy and the rich and all these people with all these special interests will continue to rule and allow their friends to get all these multi-million dollar contracts. That's what's going to happen unless we speak up and do something about it well, collectively. Well, we're going to take a little break for a minute because we want to add someone to our program. So we'll be right back in a minute. Alhamdulillah, al al-ahad, al-fard samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad wa usalli wa usallim ala khatim al-anbiya wa mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd So my beloved brothers and sisters I begin with the greeting words of the righteous Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Alhamdulillah we have the great pleasure and honor again to be with you in this journey to the hereafter and this is a journey that is haq. It is solid and it is the truth. And it has been predicted by all of the prophets and messengers who have come from the beginning of time. But the blessings of this ummah is that the last messenger Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, was given details of the journey that no other human being was even ever given before. And we are his ummah. We are those who have inherited this revelation. Well, one of the things that we're going to do is uh, we have a, a new guest, and we're going to have our other guests come back shortly. We have on my left 
and I'll let him introduce himself. Yes. Because he, he looks like a governor. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you for that, Cliff. <laughs> well, my name is Jeffrey Porter. I'm the executive director of Gordy's Foundation. I sit to Mrs. Wright's left to help her run such a wonderful organization. So please feel free to come and see us and visit, and I think you'll be pleased. Well, I tell you, you know, I am part of Gordy's Foundation. And I believe in what the Gordy Foundation does because they're trying to save young men and women, all right, by giving them something that they know how to do for self. Yes. And I don't know any other group in this city that's doing that, maybe other than the Nation of Islam, that's teaching young people how to go and do something for yourself. Uh, we got a call on the line. So we'll go to our caller. Caller, you on the line. Go on and speak. My, my question my question is, uh, when you talked about the no-bid uh, things they have to do with uh, the charter schools and, 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 and who gets hired to do things, were you, were you meaning that uh, people are doing favors for people? It, it seems I mean, like you were saying that. that let, let's, let's, maybe the mayor is giving people projects because they're who he wants to, and it's, it's because they don't have to really bid. Let's be, let's be realistic. Is that what you're saying? Let's be realistic. Let's not fool each other, okay? You and I both know that what happens in politics is that friends take care of friends. And I'm being realistic. I don't shut up, bite my tongue. I just tell it the way it is. And you can't tell me how it was because I was in that mess once upon a time. Let's well, you talk. Follow, you follow the paper trail. Find out who's getting the contract. How are they connected? They're all connected. They're Who all friends. Who did they contribute to? Absolutely. Go to the state of Illinois and get a copy right. of their filings for who contributed campaign to their contributions campaign. Campaign contributions and things like and that. And you'll know who is who and who got what because of who. Yes. Is that and it simple? happens in the county. It happens in the city. city. It happens, happens in statewide. The state. It happens all over the place. Politics is everywhere. And if you are not savvy, I wasn't savvy before I ran for office. I'm just going to be very honest. And I was never interested in politics. It was never something I wanted to do. But once I got called and I became a part of it, I understood that it's everywhere. Well, let's, let's, let's find out now. Friends helping friends. Why it's important, uh, Commissioner Avila why it's important for us to know about what medical problems come about that would cause us to really leave money to where, where it's at so that our kids will be able to do one thing, get the proper kind of education because of certain diseases that they have accum accum accumulated because of things wrong with the water, or as you say, the pool and the what? <laughs> the pool, pool and the pool pee. And pee. <laughs> well, as, as I mentioned, my name is Commissioner Frank Avila, and I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And at the district, we treat all the human waste that comes to us, the poop and the pee, the personal care products that comes to us, the cosmetics, the pharmaceutical drugs that comes to us, and we treat it at the back end. And we're talking about education and why our kids are not learning in school. Well, my philosophy is that it starts in the womb, is that in the womb, the uterus, the, the, the mother has toxic chemicals in their body already. And when the baby is in the womb, they have toxic chemicals already in the womb. So when they're born, they're born with over 200 different types of toxic chemicals in their body already. It affects their brain, it affects their health when they're born. So, so we have to go to the beginning of birth and, and try and solve and remove all these toxic chemicals at the front end. Why do we have all these products that people are buying, especially in your poor neighborhoods, buying a lot of products that are toxic and, and like antibacterial soap uh, we, uh, they say by antibacterial soap removes 99% of the germs. Well, there's an ingredient in there that's called triclosan. When you combine that with chlorinated <coughs> water, it could become carcinogen. Mm. Yeah. Creates cancer, in cancer, other words. Cancer, yeah, it creates cancer. Any, I'll bet you, you go into a home 
and their furniture is toxic. Uh, their uh, soap is toxic. The clothes they buy is toxic. The food they buy is toxic. The personal care product, the toothpaste, the shampoo. So right off the bat, they're born with learning disability. Doesn't that fall under what I told you about earlier? <laughs> Memorandum 2000. 2000. And, and so, so why, so everyone's concerned is treating it at the back end. Uh, our budget is $1.2 billion, so we're treating everything at the back end when it'd be a lot less expensive to treat it at the front end. We're talking about our kids uh, not learning. We're talking about crime. We're talking about, uh, we're sending our young kids to prison. Well, it starts, it doesn't start when they're 16 years old. It starts at birth. They're Mission. learning problems, and that's where it starts, and that's where we have to consider also. What do you it, it, it's it's kind of like the Q and Q process, where it's not any more quality; it's quantity over quality now. And you, you mentioned about different toxins in food. Basically, I'm a vegan myself. I won't even consume meat because uh, it's, it's it's treated. Anytime you go in a store and you see meat as red as a, a, a red crayon, there's a chemical, chemical process thing. there. I remember when my grandmother and them basically they would have meat in a smokehouse. You know, we'd visit down south and it would be a brownish color. It wasn't red. So what they do, they put yellow, uh, red number five and meats, yellow number five and Twinkies, and they treat the soda pop, they color it in our kids. They, they digest this stuff, and when it's ingested, now the body is trying to get rid of this stuff, but it doesn't know how. So what it is is that we basically have to take our own selves and basically do research to say, okay, what's the best thing to put in my body? It's not about the quality, like McDonald's. Once upon a time, you go into McDonald's because it was new, mom didn't have to cook, there was no drive through Now when everybody wanted to go to McDonald's, they had to come over to another concept to get that food out quicker. So now they had to drive through You don't have to come in anymore, so what do we do? Now we gotta make it quicker. So this is the microwave society, and chemicals help the microwave society. So we're literally being poisoned, but we like the taste. And, and, and our babies are being born being born with adult diseases. Yes. Any type of adult disease that they have when they're 40, 50 years old, a baby has it now. And when they take, when they eat personal care products, the food, they put antibiotics, steroids in, in, in the meat. Uh, uh, when they eat, uh, if they don't eat organic food, which you don't find in, in the African American community or the Hispanic communities, very, very few stores or maybe none. And these pesticides and herbicides from the vegetables that you eat, uh, all these chemicals, they'll meet, and they'll form new synthetic compounds. Yes. So when a baby is born, these synthetic compounds, when the receptacles open up in the baby's body, receptacles to accept the real hormones, they're accepting the synthetic hormones, <laughs> and that's what disrupt, uh, uh, endocrine disruptors, I, I don't know if you heard the term, endocrine disruptors disrupting the body right. of a baby, and, and so that's why we're having trouble in our community. Of, of learning disability, and we're talking about charter school, public schools. Well, we should go at the beginning and talk at the beginning in prevention. Well, that's my. Let's hear what all our callers has to say. Caller, go ahead and speak. Yeah, good evening to y'all. Okay, y'all talking about the, the schools, right? Now these politicians, they should not wish for they uh, wish for, cause God can take everything away from them. Like these politicians, y'all doing a good job. All right, thank, thank you, man. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. All right, the next caller. Next caller, go yes, ahead. Yes, uh, this is Donnell Glover. Uh, I would like to ask your guest a question. What do you think about the educational system moving in the direction of telling our children what to think and not teaching them how to think? <laughs> wow. That's well, that's well that's Mr. Powerful. Glover, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I taught school, fifth and sixth grade. And you couldn't fail in my classroom because if you failed, guess what? You had to go home, find the correct answer, and write it ten times, and then Bring write it why right. it was the, the correct right. answer. And then you had to have it signed by your parents. That's right. That's now, right. they don't believe, I don't believe in teaching kids to memorize stuff. Kids should be taught to know why. Yes. Because if you learn that, you can accomplish anything in, li in life. Well, the, the kids are being forced to learn stuff faster. Computers. And I remember when I was in school, everybody in class had to learn it. 
We all learned it. It was repetition. Yes. We were taught. We were expected to be able to regurgitate it, go home, write it five times, ten times, write ten sentences, things like that. Uh, do your multiplication ten times a day. I mean, you know, you know, yes. that was how we learned. But my children, even right now, my sons are, are having trouble in math. And it, and it drives me crazy because I'm like, wait a minute, you're supposed you, you don't use your toes and fingers and all. Of I use every part of my body at 38 to, you know, do math. And so I'm 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 str struggling with my seven and my 11 year old in the areas of math. They're not teaching it to them like they taught it to us. Mm -hmm. It's like they write it up on the board and then they send it home to me. And I'm like, my son's like, I don't even know how to do this. But Here's what let's, you do. I'm sorry. Let, let's hear what this caller has to say, and I'll come back to you. To Go ahead, caller, speak. Yes, uh, my name is Juan Carlos, and I live in Market Park. Yes. And uh, Alderman Jones is an excellent alderman. He was good to Lithuanian people, Hispanic people, the black people. He spoke Lithuanian, Spanish, everything. And uh, I, I don't know what happened, but uh, good alderman, very good alderman. Now, I, I want to talk about Harold Washington. I supported Harold Washington. I worked with Trudy Garcia and um, and uh, I was Velasquez and Luis Gutierrez to support uh, Trudy Garcia. So I'm happy to see Commissioner Avila there because that is part of the Hispanic Black Alliance that elected Harold Washington. Yes, sir. And that's what we need to bring back, Black and Hispanic, African-American and Mexicans and Puerto Ricans to and elect uh, uh, the mayor, uh, Sotibid Ram, or whoever, and for the power. And, and right-thinking Caucasians. Please comment. And right-thinking Caucasians. I didn't say Caucasians. No. Huh? I said right-thinking Caucasians. Yes, sir, Brother Ford. Well, well, what I was saying, uh, what the dear sister was saying in regards to education, we knew about the abacus. We also had dictionary. Yes. You had to learn words in That's the dictionary right. for your vocabulary. That's right. We don't. They go on a computer. You print it out and you turn it in. <laughs> but if you ask, okay, tell me the content and That's basis right. of what you just printed, they couldn't they tell don't you. They understand it. You know, plagiarism. You're taking something. You're not even understanding it, and you're delivering it. When you went in that dictionary, they asked you, okay, give me a definition with that word. Put it in a sentence. And you had to give a sentence and know, and that That's made right. you know exactly what you were saying. And I learned that with 40 kids in the classroom. Okay. I re when I yes. was my sixth, seventh, and eighth grade class, I want to say hello to Joanne Sinchef, uh, my uh, <laughs> former elementary school teacher, who was the first person to ever tell me my voice had power. All right. Um, but she had 40 of us in one classroom. And she would, it was like, all, if one didn't learn it, وأصلي وأسلم على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. To my beloved brothers and sisters, I begin with the greeting words of the righteous. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. الحمد لله. We have the great pleasure and honor again to be with you in this journey to the hereafter. And this is a journey that is haq, it is solid, and it is the truth. And it has been predicted by all of the prophets and messengers who have come from the beginning of time. But the blessings of this ummah is that the last messenger Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, was given details of the journey that no other human being was ever, ever given before. And we are his ummah. We are those who have inherited this revelation until the day of resurrection. And it is critical for us to begin to look at our book, the Quran, and the words of our beloved Prophet Muhammad.